three men in history have the dubious distinction of having a word for toilet ascribed to them, at least in English. They are John Harrington, an Englishman who was a close friend of Queen Elizabeth I in the 16th century, Thomas Crapper, a 19th century English plumber and plumbing supply salesman, and one other. As you might have figured out, John Harrington developed a primitive flush toilet in the late 1600s, and Thomas, while not inventing anything, did improve the existing toilets of his day to the extent that the Crapper Company became synonymous with bathroom activities. So we have the John and the Crapper. What's next? We love bringing you interesting and unusual topics like this. So if you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, drop us a like so we can keep producing content for you. The last man on our short list of people whose name has become a synonym for the toilet is the Roman Emperor Commodus, who was born in 161 AD. The word commode is used less often, but it is still quite common to hear older people use the expression. The popular 1970s American sitcom All in the Family used it quite frequently, as in, Edith, get the phone, I'm on the commode. Though it makes for a good story, the word commode comes to English via French and to French via Latin. The Latin word means convenient or convenience, and the name commodus may relate to convenience somehow, but more likely means commodity. Both John Harrington and Thomas Crapper were proud of their inventions or refinements. John Harrington was Sir John Harrington. Yes, the man credited with inventing the first flush toilet was a knight. What's more, Sir John described his device to the Queen when she visited his country residence. Elizabeth I was one of the first people in history to try the flush toilet. Harrington never made money on his invention, and it did not catch on for two centuries. But Thomas Crapper did, and neither man would likely have minded the words still used in connection with their accomplishments. However, it is doubtful that the Emperor Commodus would have liked the idea of people sitting down and passing waste on a device named after him. Had one had the audacity to refer to the toilet as a commode to the Emperor, he might have been skinned alive. So, you see, Commodus was a sadistic psychopath. But, unfortunately, being Emperor of Rome allowed one to enjoy one's sadism freely, and Commodus enjoyed it immensely. That is, until the Romans got tired of his sadistic ways and assassinated him in 192 at 31. Commodus had ruled Rome from 177. For the first three years of his reign, he was actually co-emperor with his illustrious father, Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius is well known today for the collection of his writings entitled The Reflections of Marcus Aurelius a virtual handbook for those who wish to live a calm, stoic life of moderation. Marcus Aurelius was a revered figure in his time, and in the time since, he has been dubbed as one of the five good emperors for his accomplishments, expanding the borders of the empire and increasing the prosperity of Rome. Commodus, whose birth name was Lucius Aelius Aurelius Commodus, may have suffered from an inferiority complex, knowing or believing that he could not and would not achieve his father's fame. He may also have been one of the countless spoiled princes throughout history, never being forbidden anything, especially since his stoic father was often absent governing the empire. He might also have been seriously ill mentally. He may have been all three. We will never know for sure. We know that Commodus committed many crimes. Not crimes to him, perhaps, but to us, without doubt. Commodus is sometimes compared to the earlier Roman Emperor Nero, 37 AD to 68 AD. Nero is still remembered as one of the cruelest emperors, and his life ended when he ordered his slave to kill him. He had just been pronounced a public enemy by the Senate for his harsh rule. Commodus was also cruel, and he was finally strangled by a champion wrestler, a killing arranged by his advisors. Both emperors fancied themselves artists. Nero was famed for dressing as a woman and putting on public concerts. He was reputedly terrible, but no one dared not applaud the performances. Commodus also loved singing and dancing and fancied himself a comedian. 
though his crudity made his aristocratic peers uncomfortable. He also believed himself to be a great gladiator and fought with trained slaves or gladiators, but never in public. Pity the slave or gladiator that didn't let the emperor win, though it is said that Commodus was quite skilled. He also likely acted out famous gladiatorial fights and performances in private for friends and family. So again, applause was probably required and wise. It is recorded that at age 11, Commodus ordered his first man to be executed. This was a slave who Commodus believed had not heated his bath correctly. The prince ordered the slave tossed into the furnace used to heat the water. But other clever slaves threw a sheepskin in instead. Commodus smelled the burning hair and flesh and believed the slaves had carried out his order. In the famous movie Gladiator, Commodus is portrayed as having a crush on his sister, Lucilla. Nothing could be further from the truth. Lucilla married young and grew to despise her brother, not because of an incestuous crush, but because he was a terrible ruler, driving the Roman economy into the ground. That, and she wanted to be empress, ruling jointly with her husband. A clumsy attempt at killing Commodus failed, and worse, the would-be killer called out, here is what the Senate sends to you, as he lunged at the emperor. This exclamation triggered Commodus's already rampant paranoia. The would-be killer was executed, likely by crucifixion. Lucilla was exiled to the beautiful island of Capri, but it would be her home for only six months. Commodus sent a member of his guard to kill her. Amazingly, Lucilla's husband, Pompeianus, was allowed to retire peacefully to the countryside, even though it was his nephew that tried to kill the emperor. Two Praetorian guardsmen were also involved in the attempt and managed to kill one of the emperor's closest advisors and friends, which Commodus took hard. One of these guardsmen turned on the other and accused him and another man of planning future attempts on the emperor's life. Commodus had these men executed. Commodus was not completely stupid, and he gathered information that a small number of senators had indeed conspired against him, so he launched what today would be called a purge. Commodus set the army and his guard on senators he believed had plotted his death. A few were guilty, many were not. He often ordered their heads put on pikes and their bodies dumped in the Tiber River or on the street. A man named Sextus Condianus was the adult son of one of the senators killed by the emperor and wisely fled the city. Commodus was worried that Condianus would eventually seek revenge. Reports reached the emperor, who by this time was beginning to fancy himself an incarnated hero Hercules, son of the god Jupiter, that Condianus had been seen all over Italy, in disguise, waiting for the right moment to strike. History records that Commodus had scores of men killed who just looked like Condianus. Once again, their heads were put on display for everyone to see. Although no one knows if Condianus was eventually captured or escaped the clutches of the emperor, he was not that important to anyone besides the emperor. We've already mentioned Commodus's love for gladiatorial combat. But while he did maim and kill men in private, this never happened in public. It was likely believed that this was beneath his station, as he also indulged in private chariot races for the same reason. Both spectacles were seen as being beneath him. Commodus used blunted or wooden weapons in the public arena. He showed off his prowess and his supposed mercy. Commodus forced generals and senators to attend his combats to ensure everyone knew where the power in Rome resided. Moreover, they frequently had to cheer for the emperor, loudly. That was not humiliation enough for Commodus, though. He ordered the men to chant, You are Lord, and you are first, of all men most fortunate. You win and win you will, from time everlasting, Amazonian, you win. Two strange episodes concerning Commodus come to us from the Roman historian Cassius Dio. In one, Commodus, apparently in the arena, killed an ostrich by beheading it. 
He then held up the long, bloody head and neck and strutted about in front of the gathered senators, waving it in their faces. Message received. The other episode reports that the ruler ordered the gathering of all the men in Rome who had lost their feet and legs. This was not uncommon. Many were likely diabetics or had had their feet infected by worms from the dirty streets. Commodus gathered these men because he was eager to recreate a story from Roman myth in which giants attacked a hero with stones. One other thing, the giants in the story all had serpents for lower legs. No problem, Commodus had serpent's tails attached to the remains of the men's legs or hips to resemble the giants. We don't know if by tails the entire serpent was used, but either way, creepy. According to the myth, the giants flung large stones at the hero. But instead of rocks, Commodus gave these poor men sponges to throw so he would not be injured. After they had thrown their stones, Commodus bludgeoned each man to death. Before his death, and likely contributing to it, Commodus lost his mind. He gave Rome a new name, Colonia Lucia Aelia Nova Comodiana, or the new colony of Commodus. He made people address him by new and unique titles, Amazonius or Exuperatorius. Today, people would say Commodus, the invincible man of martial skill and superhuman abilities. But of course, today, Commodus would be locked up in addition to renaming the greatest city in the Western world after himself, he also renamed the Senate, which became the Fortunate Commodian Senate. After that, Romans were no longer Romans, but Commodians. And finally, it publicly declared that Commodus was the Golden One, and his rule, the Golden Age. This was more than the Senate could bear, even though the emperor was popular with much of the public. He put on a lot of games and spectacles. Many of them enjoyed seeing the wealthy, patrician senators humiliated. Eventually, an assassination plan was hatched, which involved the emperor's mistress, Marcia. She poisoned his wine one night, but Commodus threw it up, claiming the heat had made him sick and weak. Then, the young wrestler, who we mentioned earlier, visited the emperor while he soaked in the tub, trying to recover, and strangled him. The Senate named the general Pertinax as Commodus's successor, but the end of the line of Marcus Aurelius ushered in a period of civil strife. Pertinax lasted just over 100 days in office. He was followed by four more emperors in the same year. By the end of his life, Commodus was so hated that the Senate ordered any public mention of his name to be removed. Statues, plaques, and arenas throughout the empire that honored or were named after him were torn down or altered. Cassius Dio records a senatorial decree. Cast the gladiator into the charnel house. He who slew the senate, let him be dragged with the hook. Let the murderer be dragged in the dust. We hope you enjoyed these tales from the life of one of Rome's cruelest emperors. If you did, please like and subscribe to our channel. Clicking the notification button will ensure you know when a new and exciting video is released. Thank you for watching.